Hi there. Welcome back to the CPA. This is Fighting with Friends. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This time we are previewing UFC Fight Night 97, which takes place on Sunday morning at 1 a.m. South African time. With me this evening, as always, I have the reigning, defending, undisputed, vegan <laughs> champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, of course, Brother Gaia. <laughs> How's it going, Eddie? <laughs> so my double awards. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, bro. Happy to be here. Two fight, two oh. fight cards in the same weekend. Couldn't ask for anything better. Great time, great time. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Also this evening, we have with us this man is still undefeated as a father. Uh, around here, you might know him as Mr. Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, George Jetson. It's Jedi Knight. Jedi Knight. You. <laughs> you all right, bro? Uber guys. Uber guys. Uber guys. <laughs> All right, boys. So very exciting fight card to get into. And as always, we are going to start at the top of the card. So let's jump straight in. We're going to the welterweight division where we have Gilbert Dorino Burns taking on Sean Brady. Gilbert Burns starting as a 2.5 underdog. That's now at 2.65. Uh, Brady starting as a one. 0.53 favorite is now 1.5. Uh, Gilbert Burns, 20, 20, 22 and 7, two fight slide. Uh, last fight lost against three named Jack by third round TKL. Sean Brady, 16 and 1, last fight beating Calvin Gastelum by third round submission. And of course, now I'm going to take it to the experts. Um, Ross, brother Gaia, what are your thoughts here, bro? This is uh, quite a, a good matchup done by the UFC. Uh, both these guys are ranked in the top 10. Obviously, Sean Brady ranked 8 and Gilbert Burns at 6. Um, why well, well, I say it's quite interesting, interesting and a good matchup is because I kind of find these guys evenly matched in terms of their fight styles. It's very similar. Um, both guys are quite active when they're on the feet. Um, they, have in, they have a similar amount of output per, per, per minute in terms of three strikes landed per minute. That's significant strikes as well. And also, both of them have got very high credentials in the grappling, in grappling department of MMA. Both guys are black belt in jiu-jitsu. And uh, Gilbert Burns came out throughout the fight week saying he's excited for this fight in, in the sense that um, if it goes down to the ground, he's looking forward to it. However, uh, Sean Berry does have a very, very high uh, takedown defense. Very hard to get him on the ground. Even Michael Chiesa had a difficult time to get Sean Berry back uh, to the ground, which resulted in the fight in the stand-up fight. And I have a feeling that this fight may end up being like that as well, where you could see these guys just stand up for 15 minutes. Um, who do I think is going to be the one that's going to come out on top here? It's very tough to say. Both guys took a loss to Bilal Muhammad, who is the current world to champion. Um, you said, you mentioned that uh, Sean Berry came off of, of a win in his last fight against Calvin Gaslam. But one would argue that Calvin Gaslam pretty much on like a downward trajectory on, in his UFC career. Um, whereas Gilbert Burns being 38 years old, do I see him have another run at the title? I'm not too sure. Uh, if he, he's a dog. We know what he's like. He's been in there with the biggest biggest guys in the welterweight division. Um, and we know he, he comes to fight every, every minute of every round. Um, so you could expect him to use Fort Fisher to get himself sort of navigating this fight. But I think Sean Brady might just be the younger guy. He's got the, the youth on his side. He also is on his way to make a title run. I think he might just have a little bit more to give thank you for in this one all right so brother gaia betting against brazil jedi i know this probably isn't sitting well with you bro what are you saying here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a it's a fun um fight night main event to have two top five guys that can potentially still make a run for the belt um and what's cool about them is that they kind of like apples for apples you know what i mean mm. they like the same dude just slightly yeah. different um so yeah brady looks like a very strong wrestler he's young and he's mm. got a point to prove beat calvin gaslam last right 
um, mm-hmm. which I think is a Calvin that's kind of just coming back from taking a very long layoff. Um, and he didn't and, make weight. Yeah, and he was coming from middleweight for from being in middleweight for like two or three years, trying to come back to the welterweight, mm-hmm. which was obviously going to be tough. Um, and Brady just blanketed him basically. You know, yeah. just laid on Calvin, and yeah. there was the fight was on the ground basically the whole fight. Um, and then Gilbert Burns, um, does he ever run for the title again? Maybe he probably does. Um, maybe another fight after this. Um, do I think he's gonna win? I think Burns is just gonna be a bit too much for him, you know what I mean? If Burns can. Um, sort of keep the fight standing and at his pace, then I think he will make it very difficult for Sean Brady to win. Um, because I do believe I think that on the feet, Gilbert is better than him. So, yeah, I agree. There, yeah, I agree. He's gonna try and try and try and grapple. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be up to Burns to just stop that takedown because I think Brady is definitely gonna try and grapple him so for the ufc it obviously is good because it just means that one of them is going to fall out of the top five you know and they yeah. like the same guy um yeah. i'm gonna go with gilbert burns that's obviously why the book is he's even tilting him more as the mm-hmm. favorite so no, yeah he's I'm the going... underdog he's the underdog, oh, he's the yeah. underdog. yeah yes 2.65 at the moment oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. brady's 1.5 interesting interesting mm. Mm. yeah and no, i'm still going with burns <laughs> okay jedi going with burns but Wait, i will i will, I will say this end. i will yeah. say this i do think gilbert burns has got the advantage in the striking department uh sure but his striking is not the greatest he's got a big left hook on defense and obviously one 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 two for his, his usual combos that he goes for um the yeah. other opponent that they, the other opponent that they do share in common is craig jones in jiu-jitsu and craig jones who they don't obviously the cji uh, the cji invitational that happened last week he was the guy craig jones is the guy and both of them fought him before Gilbert burns got tapped out by by craig jones with sean brady holding out craig jones through all the way through the 10 the 10 minutes um unfortunately obviously win the fight but he never got tapped out mm-hmm. and he held his own against him so and Craig Jones is a tower compared to these two men. Um, so, yeah, Jed, I think Sean Brady's best best way of winning this fight, and this is a five-round fight. I don't think it's three rounds. Uh, Sean Brady's best advantage is to obviously look to look to take him down. I do think he can actually get Gilbert Burns down, and maybe in the later rounds as well. So I do see Sean Brady winning the fight over. He will probably over. get Gilbert down at some point. But I mean, like, bruh, uh, if, if you look at the guys that Sean Brady's fought, other than Calvin, there hasn't mm. been anyone that I think is good. He's and the champ of the course, perfect Bilal. fighter, <laughs> at, at, and he, which he now lost against the champ, and he lost against Michael Kiesa, which was, I mean, he beat Michael. He beat Michael but I mean, yeah. Michael Kiesa he hasn't been in the top five in his whole life. Mm. In his whole <laughs> life. If you look Burns, <laughs> he, since like 2020, he's fought only top dudes yeah, all the two, way through. Two, 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 yeah. two. Only the top guys. Highest, highest caliber, yeah. One thing I will I say about Brady um, is yeah, that he's, he's one of the um, few people to ever be finished by Bilal. Yeah, and it's pretty like... Bilal stupid. never finishes Oaks, bro. And he's, what? he's one of the... He never finishes, guys, Bilal. He's what? <laughs> Bilal never finishes, guys. Yeah, I think you heard that part. Eddie right. said that uh, Sean Brady is one of the fewest people that has taken a, a finish to Who Bilal. Will finish Mohammed, by Bilal. Really... Yeah. Are you with us, yeah. Jedi? He finished Jetland. Bilal Muhammad. Nah, he was finished by Bilal. No. Bilal finished him. Sean Brady. No, I think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm saying he's one yeah, of the few I people know why ever, bro, because Bilal never finishes anyone. Oh, exactly. Now, that's how poor Sean Brady is. That's, that's the testament right there. 
Yeah, I mean, I would say so. So I'm also kind of leaning towards burn. So um, I know you guys said that at some point, Brady would probably get burns to the ground. Mm. Um, so yeah, do you, do you think, Jedi, do you think Burns' takedown defense is enough to get him the result here, putting your bias for Brazil aside? Hey, that's a good question. Yo, I, I honestly didn't hear that. Is Burns, take, is Burns takedown defense going to be enough to secure him the result here? Because you said he will get taken down at some point. Dude. Is he going to? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Simple answer. Simple question, <laughs> simple answer. I love it. All right. So once yes, again... Ability to get back up is I think Jedi's internet is blocked down to again. Okay, yeah, but anyway, I think life. I need to speak through that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, <laughs> Ross going. Yes, I heard the question. Okay. Yes, I had the question. Yeah. Okay. So Jade's basically in the Gilbert Burns camp. <clears throat> okay. All right. And he so... thinks that he will be able to get back up to his feet and eventually. The thing here that's the big question is the gas tank of, of Gilbert Burns at 38 years old. You know what I mean? Can he be able to do it again? And also for five rounds is the thing. Because I expect from Brady to be quite relentless with mm. pressure. If he doesn't obviously get pushed back by Gilbert Burns' offensive uh, striking, because it's very good. We know it's very good and it's quick as well. I mean, you put people out mm. in first round very, very quickly. Gilbert Burns will, will probably get taken down at some point, right? Mm. I think he's going to get back up. It's going to be Gilbert Burns' ability to get back up. And also, that, like, is he going to, is his gas tank going to survive? Five rounds, you know what I mean. Mm. That's another mm. qual. Um, mm. He's he's probably gonna survive the five rounds. I think. He's, um, how how fit he's gonna look at the end? I don't know. But mm. what I'm what I'm trying to say is, I think he's gonna get back up. If Sean Brady takes him down, he'll just get back up. He's fought Usman. He's fought Hamza. Who was trying to take him down through that whole fight and he then he kept getting back up so i don't think he's gonna be shocked or surprised by anything that sean brady's gonna do i think brady's gonna have a difficult time taking him down but mm. it's gonna be his number one way to victory mm -hmm. is to offensive wrestle otherwise i don't think he's he's you know what i mean if he stays like yeah. in a boxing range and he doesn't yeah. shoot at all then I think, I think Gilbert's going to beat him, bro. He's yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. with take that. Gilbert's going to walk over him. Agreed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got you. Got you. So I just want to take take it to Ross. Um, Jed, I was talking about the later rounds there. So mm. two questions. Uh, do you see this fight going into the later rounds, number one? And secondly, how do you see the winner getting it done? Well, the way Jed, Jed described it now, if they keep it standing, I can see Gilbert Burns stopping Sean Brady, uh, either by, by TKO third round or even submission third round. But I know I went to Sean Brady. I don't think it's going to go to the fourth or fifth round, to be quite honest. I think both these guys are looking to put the fight away within the third round. I haven't seen Sean Brady go five rounds, but his style, his style does have it that he can, make, he can have that gas tank to go that long. Um, I think, But I'm going to stick with Sean Brady, and I'm going to go... Round three, round three stoppage. Okay, solid. Uh, Jedi, how does uh, Gilbert Burns get it done? Brazil Brady. Hey, Brazil Brady. <laughs> I think he's just gonna piece him up, he's gonna stop the takedowns and he's gonna walk forward and piece Brady up and beat him. Decision or finish? Um, bro, that depends how much punishment Sean Brady is willing to take. I think it's going to be a matter of folding him. You know what I mean? He's he's just going to fold. He's going to be like, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to fight. 
Or he's just going to keep like trying to grapple at the end and just like hang on there at the end. That's how I see the fight going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, the main thing is he needs to try and control or force Gilbert to wrestle in the early rounds. Mm. Otherwise, it's not going to be a tired Gilbert at the end. It's going to be a Gilbert that's trying to, you know what I mean? Chase the win. All right. So panel split on this one. Please let us know in the comments what you think, uh, Brady or Burns. All right, boys. So we'll keep it moving. And this time we are going to the women's flyweight division. Mm-hmm. And here we see a all Brazilian affair. The number four yep. ranked Jessica and Judge taking on number eight ranked Natalia Silva. Jessica and Judge started out as a 3.1 underdog, is now at 3.4. She, of course, is 26 and 12 with a two fight win streak. Despite beating Mariana Rodriguez by split decision. Mm-hmm. Natalia mm-hmm. Silva, now the 1.36 favorite. Uh, 17 and 5 on a five fight win streak in the UFC. Two finishes, three decisions. Last fight beating Vivian Arujo by unanimous decision. Mm-hmm. So let's take it to Brother Jetson. Jetson, what are your thoughts on this one, bro? Um, I think it's a very difficult fight for Andras to. to um come up weight and take a fight against a chicky that's so long and tall has got good takedown defense mm-hmm. um so yeah obviously it's all leaning towards natalia as the favorite here the overwhelming favorite yeah so i think if she can stay away from the big over and right uh she can win this on decision mm. Okay, so Natalia. stay away from the big over and right. Um, Ross, would you agree with that? Or does Jessica Andrade have any other way to <laughs> win this fight? Yeah, look, this is a fight where I'm actually going to agree with Jada on this one. Um, we've watched Jessica Andrade, former champion, for, uh, was it flyweight? No, strawweight champion. Um, being in there with the who's who of the women's, you know, like Tovchenko, Nama Nunes, she's 4 2, she beat. Like you mentioned, uh, Marina Rodriguez in the last outing, and also Mackenzie Dern before that, sleeping Mackenzie Dern. Um, but like like Ted was saying, it's, it's Jessica Andrade has pretty much just got that over and right, or very, very fast left took after the over and right. She strikes to the body with that combination, but that looping kind of strikes, likes to pressure and then get, get the opponents like up to the cage, plant their feet, and start throwing strikes from their butt. However, in this one, I think Natalia might just be a bit too elusive for. Natalia in correction early is on a five fight win streak in the UFC, not four, an eleven fight win streak overall coming into this fight. And like Jed mentioned, she's got a very, very intense takedown mm. defense, ninety-one percent recorded in the UFC, so she hasn't really been taken down. As well as a very extremely high output of strikes landed per minute with four point five three strikes landed per minute. And it's very creative as well. It's almost like like the tie boxing, excuse me, like the kickboxing or shooter boxing kind of style, very quick throws swinging back kicks very fast one twos and she fights also off the back foot very very comfortably as well so i think she might just be able to piece uh i think she's going to piece jessica up for for the duration of the fight i don't mm. think she wins it by stoppage i think she gets the decision done but like quite quite significantly though yeah. all right so speed, the speed difference here is gonna be yeah. quite apparent it's gonna be like like sugar Sean versus uh tito vera you know what mm. I mean? This, the, mm. the, the, the speed difference, you're going to notice it straight away. Yeah. It's mm. going to be the main quality. I agree though. with that, yeah. I definitely agree with that. All right, so Jedi, do you agree it's going to be a decision? Or can you see a finish going down here? Yeah, I'm going to go with Natalia, three-round decision. But I don't, All like, right. she's she's very good and stuff, and she does have finishes. I've seen her mm. the stop the last fight she was in, she stopped that tricky right? Mm. Um, but I don't know, man. Jessica Andrade is quite tough to put away, bro. She's yeah, difficult that's to put I'm... away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I do like a head kick. 
to yeah, like, something magical. Like, I've seen this lady walk through a lot. So yeah. I didn't know if Natalia strong enough to finish her, but she's definitely going to touch her up like a, a hundred times. She don't need no yeah. makeup. Just come yeah. to the ring. <laughs> They're going to walk her up. Bro. That's true, bro. I, I see it happening that way. Look, there is going to be a finish in this fight. You can expect it coming from Jessica's side. You know what I mean? You can expect her to be the one that will land and knock out <laughs> or possible submissions. But I think Natalia yeah. is going to be the one that's going to just to showcase us a video game exposition of, of, of striking. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a vibe. So, yeah, finally, the panel are in agreement here. So, <laughs> one for the parlay, boys. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep it moving now to the men's featherweight division. Uh, yep, yep. So let me just bring that up here. The men's featherweight division, where we see Steve Garcia <coughs> taking on Carl Nelson. Mm -hmm. So Steve Garcia, of course, coming into this fight as the 1.57 favorite. He is 16 and 5, 13 by knockout. Uh, really earning his name, the Mean Machine. Uh, he's on a four-fight win streak, all by KO. His last fight, Singwood Choi, winning by first-round knockout. His opponent, Carl Nelson, is the 2.65 underdog. He's 15-5-1, and one, and he's on a three-fight win streak, last time out beating Bill Algio by first-round TKO. So, um, would it, is it safe to say that Somebody is going to sleep here, brother Gaia. <laughs> Very possible. I don't know if it's safe to say. Um, if there is someone that's going to land the knockout here, I would say it would be Steve Garcia. He's a very good boxer. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, he's uh, winning his last fight by, by knockout and also four fight wins. And not to mention that he knocked out uh, Chase, Chase Hooper as well. But I've watched Carl Nelson's fight, his previous fight against Paul Aljo, and he looked really good against Paul Aljo, as well as the fight before that when he fought against uh, Padilla. And a Padilla, flick kickboxer, Mexican, Mexican dude, he's, he's super fast, really, really creative with his striking. And he was piecing Carl up into round one, like, like it was a 10-8 round. And then uh, going into round two and three, you could, um, you could see the conditioning on Carl Nelson's side to you know survive that and, and take over the fight and started to be more output on striking and mixing it up with some takedowns. And I think that if Chase, excuse me, not Chase, if Steve Garcia doesn't put Carl Nelson down in that first round and get sort of in a dinner and dump, you can expect Carl Nelson to come back and utilize the overall game of martial arts with the grappling and strikes as well. And uh, could overwhelm Steve Garcia here. So I won't out and out put Steve as the favorite, even though he is the favorite. I think that's because he's got the higher knockout or finishing rate between the two fighters. Um, it's going to be a stand-up war for sure, but I expect Carl Nelson to maybe shoot to the takedowns if you see the fight's going to be a bit more even going into the second round and third round. So I'm going to go Carl Nelson here, three rounds, possibly getting the finish in the third round. Oh, okay. A bit controversial there. I was defying the bookmakers going for Carl Nelson. Jedi, what are you saying, Evra? Yeah, yeah i didn't really know these dudes um i haven't watched much of them up until earlier today so based on record and things like that i'm gonna go with kayla nelson also decision. <laughs> kayla nelson. okay all right so basically kayla nelson yeah we're locking it in here for kayla nelson one more yeah. for Paul, so let's lock that one in. Okay, <laughs> Nelson. All right, so let's now. Are we going to keep it moving, boys? Any final thoughts here? Um, yeah, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right, let's keep it moving. So next up, we are going to the featherweight division. Sorry, no, the mm. flyweight division where we have yeah. Match Schnell versus. Alejandro Costa. So let's bring that up here. Well done, really? Oh, Cody no, Durden. No, a, yeah, it's a different fight. That is a, there's a replacement there. This is a late replacement. Oh, mm. oh Scheiser, guys. I'm sorry about that. No, um, so yeah, I'll take it to you guys then because I'm obviously caught a little bit with my pants down here. Uh, Ross, <laughs> 
what are you thinking of uh? what's up man uh the the um Eddie didn't catch on the, the replacement for this fight that took when did the uh, replacement happen uh, <laughs> dude i, I spoke me by surprise today as well I'm not gonna lie oh i, I think because yeah. I, like, I did these notes last week yeah i remember but yeah okay yeah, anyway I mean, let's, let's let's keep it moving brother guy your thoughts moving. here please um Look, I was more excited about the previous opponent for Match Null because it was both fighters were ranked, and uh, Match Null definitely needs a win coming off three loss, uh, two losses, excuse me, against uh, Steve Ursik and uh, Nikolaou as well. Those are two very, very, high, very good fighters in this in the flyweight division. Um, but Match Null has been in there with like Spentosia, Brandon Reval, so he's fought some really high level dudes. Um, however, the, all of them has finished him. Everyone that he has fought has either knocked him out or tapped him out. Um, he's very notorious for getting for getting uh, knocked down. Even though he's a skillful fighter, he's very very high out, um, output, very high uh, um, output of strikes, and he's not scared of going to the ground and looking for submissions as well. Uh, he's got nine wins by submissions, by the way. So that's like, you know what I mean? He's not he's not afraid of going that way. However, he's also always there to be hit. Now, Cody Durden, like I said, very very late late replacement, also uh, ranked number fifteen in the flyweight. I haven't seen too much of the guy, but what I could gather, he's a predominantly take wrestling wrestling type of fighter, securing between uh, four and a half takedowns for every fifteen minutes. So you can guarantee that he's going to look to keep the fight on the ground. Um, do I think he's going to get it done? I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't really want to give a give a complete answer because, like I said. I wish I could have seen a lot more Cody to give a to give a clear cut clear, clear, clear cut answer, excuse me. But I'm gonna go with Match now because I've seen what he's capable of doing. I've seen what he has done. I've also watched him in the tough house, and um, he's got the attributes to be to be a good contender in this in this flyweight. Yeah, so if he gets a win here, he could definitely climb the ranks. Mm -hmm. Jedi Knight, anything you can tell us about uh, this fight? Yeah, um, I didn't know there was a change myself. I thought he was still fighting Joshua Van also, so we both don't have pants on. Um, <laughs> it's always better than someone else. Match now, I don't know much of match now. <laughs> I don't know much of Matt uh, Snell other than he likes to participate in a lot of cancelled fights, so hopefully this <laughs> one doesn't get cancelled. <laughs> and then for Coley Durden, um, I think he's related to Tyler Durden uh, from the Project <laughs> Mayhem, and that's a bunch of crazies. So I'm going to go with Coley Durden here <laughs> to win. <laughs> sound logic, oh, sound man. logic. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Sound all right boys so um <laughs> any final thoughts regarding these guys um if you're gonna make a bet on this fight probably uh, there's, on there's no there's no odds at the moment because i think the late replacement obviously threw everything off yeah uh i would say better match now yeah uh, gonna wanna keep we, don't need, we don't we don't i can't bet now we don't need that drama <laughs> okay, okay anyway so yeah i think um let's keep it moving boys we're gonna take it to the lightweight division now yep yep for our next part and here we have uh trevor peak hopefully i get the names right this time and we have no late <laughs> replacements but yeah we have trevor peak who is 1.9 underdog is nine and two eight wins by knockout last fight losing against charlie campbell by unanimous decision he comes up against yanal ashmoos who is the 1.8 favorite uh so yeah actually strange one here because uh, Trevor Peak actually started as the 1.9 dog and is now the 1.8 favorite and Yanal Ashmu started as the 1.8 favorite but now is the 2.05 <laughs> dog he is of mm. course Ashmu's 7 and 1 his last fight against Chris Duncan yeah the bookies so, must have found out some what <laughs> Something Maybe fishy is, is going on here, boys. This fight. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody is either got a broken rib, <laughs> or somebody <laughs> is fighting for the rent. He's like two months behind. His third month final notice. They're like, nah, this guy's coming with everything. Oh, he's like, nah, this guy's down and out. He's going to get beat. <laughs> like raise the stock. 
That's so weird. So yeah, what do you guys make of this um, bizarre turn of events? So Amus um, Bush is the underdog now. Amus um, Bush. Hey. <laughs> yeah, really now the underdog. He, yeah, yeah, now he's now the weird, underdog. Bro. That is so weird. I don't know how they got that. Um, I think. I think it's the. I, I think know they're paying him off. They're paying him to take a dive. To take a dive or something. <laughs> Trevor Peak. So they would definitely they, be better on this fight. Or, yeah, I think all Look they, at him, what they're doing. He doesn't is... know in America. Yeah, now Ashmoos. Look, I watched Yanal's last, last uh, two fights. He doesn't know anybody, I mean, bro. They found this guy in the, in the visa line as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jed. <laughs> Look, um, but he doesn't know I think, anybody. I think they, I think they wanted to bet. <laughs> wanted to Who does he know Ashmoos. in America? No, yeah, no, Ashmoos. No ways. Yeah, look, he, he, he fought really well. Look, the last fight against Duncan, I think he got injured, and, and, and um, that's why he took such a long gap before coming back to the, to the UFC again. I think because he got really badly hurt in that fight, but he still won. I think he broke. Either his left arm or something like that, one either left or right arm, but he still fought for three rounds and won, um, and and looked good with it. Even in his first fight, um, in the debut in the UFC, winning by by knockout, dude hits really hard, very creative, and he's also got very good wrestling. Um, he reminds me a lot of Marab Devashvili, but not as not as the same wrestling credentials, but hits freaking hard, um, and I think that's probably why the betting odds are doing what they're doing because. I think Canal's going to go out there and smash Triple Peak, to be honest. If he doesn't get hurt in the first round, I think Canal gets the finish in this fight. Possibly first round or second round knockout. Heavy, 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 heavy. Even though Triple Peak right. is, is, is on, he won three of his last four, and he was on a three-fight win streak up until that last one, I do think Canal's going to go in there and, and put him away. Big statement, big statement. Jedi, any final thoughts on this fight? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with the smart money. I'm going with Trevor Peak. I'm going with the favorite. All right. So, yeah, gentlemen, I think that's a good time for us to go to a new segment, which I like to call. David! 60 keys, baby! <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, Here gentlemen, um, seeing that we don't have a sponsor yet, we need to find a way to play the balls around here. So, let's get those picks in, boys. Um, I know we were split on the Burns-Brady <laughs> fight, um, but for the sake of playing the balls with the parlor here, I need you guys to come to some kind of a consensus. So, Ross, is there any way you can see it going for Burns? I can. I mean, like I said you... in the beginning, like I said in the beginning, the points Joe was making um, is what I would agree with if I was going to bet on Gilbert Burns. I would think he, okay. I would think Burns to win the fight in that fashion. Um, okay. Like you were saying, he's going to be to put apply the pressure, be a bit more skillful on 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 the, on the feet. Might be able to stifle Sean Brady's takedowns, and and I I can see why Jed would go with that. Got you, know, you. And also Jed. Of the credentials. Got you, got you. Okay, so Jed, can you see? Can you make any argument for Brady winning this fight? I guess just footwork, timing, and trying to catch Burns, bruh, or because I can't see Brady taking Burns down early and just muscling him and ground and pounding mm -hmm. him. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. If Kamara Usman couldn't do it and Hamzat couldn't do it, like these big wrestlers that he's fought with, and they didn't do that to him. So I can't see Brady doing that. You know what I mean? Brady's going to have to use timing and footwork to catch mm. him on the chin or something to that effect you know what i mean that's right. for me the only unless he just comes in and does what he does because i thought murab was gonna find it difficult against a widow but murab just blew right through so yeah. so fair, that's like fair. a size that's like a size difference you know what i mean so it was much smaller than murab where this is like i think the size is quite even mm. Mm. All right, Jada, I think um, with your closing arguments that you've convinced me, so let's lock 
Gilbert Burns into the parlay for the boys. Um, not too much else that I'm willing to wager on here. Um, any final thoughts here, Ross, in terms of opportunities to keep the CPS reports afloat? Yeah, here? I think Are we gonna make this money? As, as Muj as moves to, to win by, by finish. <laughs> right, so let's lock <clears throat> as moves in. And then uh, match now to win by decision. Yeah, because, like I said, because... Um, yeah, Mass is probably going to beat that guy. You can't bet on that fight. Oh, yet. yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, I think that's the safest bet. Don't oh, bet yeah. on Steve Garcia and Carl Leave it there. Yeah. Leave it All right, again. so that would bring us a combined total odds of 19.4, which is not bad at all. All right, so gentlemen, I think we can wrap it up there. Yep, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, just let us know in the comments if you have any uh, different thoughts regarding the parlay. Um, but of course, we'd be very interested to hear your thoughts as well. All right, boys, that pretty much wraps it up from us. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out. <laughs>